Welcome to Ghana's number one late news. I'm Stephen Enti and uh, this news is uh, live from our studios at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. You can catch us also on DSTV channel 279 and on our social media pages as well as 3news.com. Here are the stories that made the headlines today. An Accra circuit court has granted the chief executive officer of men's gold, Nana Pia Mensa, bail to the tune of one billion cities with five sureties. The court presided over by uh, Justice Jane Harriet Aquile Kwe ordered that the three of the sureties must be justified. Nana Pia Mensa, popularly known as Nam One, is also required to report to the police every Wednesday. And Ghanaian voters are twice as much likely to vote for parliamentary candidates who provide infrastructural development than those who promise financial support to individuals. Uh, that's according to a research by the Center for Democratic Development, CDD. This is an adverse contrast of widely held opinion that MPs are voted to be lawmakers. And the Speaker of the House of Representatives of the United States Congress, Nancy Patricia Pelosi, is expected to address Ghana's parliament on Wednesday. This was disclosed by the majority leader, Oseche Mensa Bonsu, during the presentation of the business of the House for the upcoming week. Uh, the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, is to demolish a 60-year-old kindergarten structure at Kusi in the Denchrebuo district of the Asian region. The building, which was ripped off during a rainstorm, has been declared a death trap. And in sports, the world governing football agency, FIFA, has approved the statutes proposed by the Normalization Committee of Ghana, clearing the way for a new constitution of the Ghana Football Association. TV3 Sports understand that the approval came in within the last 24 hours. The, the statutes proposed by the Normalization Committee were in response to widespread agreement that some of the previous rules in Ghana football governance were hindering progress. Right, uh, this is News at 10 live from our studios here at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. And reports coming in suggest that a truck uh, containing fertilizers for the planting for food and jobs program has been impounded in the Upper East Regional town of Navrongo. According to the uh, Upper East Regional Minister, Honorable Paulina Abayege, uh, the, uh, the trucks containing the fertilizers were uh, apprehended earlier uh, in a police operation. She's joining us on the telephone lines for some clarity on this. Uh, Madam, good evening and thank you very much. And uh, we, we have gathered information uh, from yourselves that uh, the truck was carrying about a thousand 1,050 kg fertilizers uh, across to Burkina Faso. Can you confirm this? Yes, the truck was carrying 1,000 bags of the 50 kilogram uh, fertilizer meant for planting for food and jobs. It was impounded in Navrongo. Um when the police got the alert, in fact, the BNI in Abongo alerted the police yesterday in the evening around 6.30 thereabouts. And um, when the police got there, there were two trucks. One was a Ghana-registered uh, truck, articulated truck, 
The other was a Burkina registered at this, uh, truck, uh, Tipa truck. I'm seeing pictures on your TV. That's the registration number for the fertilizer for the Burkina Faso truck. Now, what they were doing was that they were removing the stickers on the fertilizer from Ghana. They were removing the stickers and tearing them into pieces. And as they removed the sticker from each uh, bag, they will tear it into pieces and then they will transfer that bag that they have removed the sticker from, from the Ghana registered truck onto the Burkina registered truck. So by the time the police got there, they had uh, loaded 350 onto the, the Burkina Faso truck, as you see there, and then we had 650 left with the sticker so on on the Ghana registered truck. Mm. And uh, you you earlier uh, informed uh, your Facebook audience that the uh, this operation took place as a result of a tip off from the Bureau of National Investigation. So can you give us an update of what has happened so far with those who were arrested in connection with this smuggle, the drivers or anyone associated with it? Thank you very much. The driver to the breaking up assault truck absconded. As at the time I went there around noon, the driver for the Burkina truck had not yet been found. But the consignee, one Aisha Ibrahim, had been arrested along with the driver to the Ghana vehicle. And they were taking their statements at the police station to be granted court bill. They, I had a discussion with the, uh, the district commander for Navongo, and they are to be processed for court on Monday. The two people, as I said, we haven't found the Burkina Faso driver yet, but these two are to be processed for court on Monday. All right, so uh, I want to find out from you whether this is the first time uh, such an operation or such arrest has been made in the region, especially in connection with the smuggle of uh, fertilizers. Unfortunately, no. Mm. Um, in fact, as I speak with you right now, we have another uh, truck loaded with 2,000 bags of the 25 kilograms packed at, the, uh, at our RCC here, the residence here. We have a large compound. It was brought in this evening. That truck was arrested on the 23rd of this month. Originally, the fertilizer is meant for Binduri. On 23rd, the same time, around 6.30 in the evening, they found it in Kulungugu. Now, Kulungugu is a border town to Burkina Faso. Binduri is very far and off the road from the Kulungugu, uh, from Kulungugu where, they were, where they were arrested, uh, 2,000 baht. Before then, we had arrested a truck about two months ago, mm. loaded with uh, 4,000, two trucks loaded with 4,000 baht, which on the way, though, was meant for Navrongo. However, they went past Navrongo, got to board Paga, and they were arrested in Paga and brought uh, to to Wagatanga. Right. Um, uh, I, yes. Yeah, so, so I know that as the uh, regional minister, you are the chairman of the Regional Security Council, and uh, you possibly might have uh, some level of information to share about measures in place by the security agencies to clamp down on any uh, clandestine operations that will result in the pilfering of these fertilizers from Ghana across the various borders in your region. Do you have any such information to share? I can assure you, I can assure you that the security agencies in this region are not sleeping. We have arrested meetings over and over and over on this. In fact, the reason we are having all these arrests is because the security agencies are working. Even in the night, they, we have what we call the border patrol committee. We have the regional one, we have the district one. They arrest, you know, even sometimes we arrest them, these are the major ones in thousands, but we arrest people with 130, they are brought in and all that. In fact, as I was at the uh, police office, the police had gone into the market. According to, by the rules uh, on planting for food and jobs this year, no 50 kilogram bag is supposed to come to the northern part of Ghana, of planting for food and jobs fertilizer. 
So even as we were at the police station, the police was in the Navongo market confiscating any 50 kg bag uh, that, uh, that, that was on the market. So the security agencies are all working. All of us right. are all over the place and working. And right, so, so but, um, I need to get some clarity on this. So you're suggesting yes. that the uh, packaging for the fertilizers yes. that go to the northern part of this country are quite different from the 50 kg. Yeah, exactly. So they are, exactly. Bigger, they are bigger than 50 kg or smaller than 50 kg? We, we, for the northern part of this country, only 25 kg, 25 kg. from Bono upward. Mm. I don't know whether it's from Bono upward, but right. I, even if it's not from Bono, it means the five northern regions that we have now. Any fertilizer that is not 25 kg, that five is of year. Mm. It's illegal and must be confiscated. Mm. And it's... the perpetrators are arrested if it's possible. Right, so uh, do you suspect... Only 25... Sorry, carry on, madam. Yes, we are only taking 25 kilograms. The ones that we was were, were that the ones that were impounded in Navongo, for instance, are 50 kg. So even that one, the, the fact that they are even 50 alone is illegal. They are not supposed to be here. Interesting. So I, I was going to ask earlier uh, when uh, I stopped for you to continue whether you suspect the, these are the actions of saboteurs or they are just plain criminal gangs who are taking advantage of the uh, planting for food and job programs and their availability of free fertilizers to smuggle these out of the country. This must be a very economically draining on the government to provide these fertilizers and they're sold across the borders. Do you have any leads? as to who are behind these criminal rings or gangs? Um, exactly. They are, they are criminals. I, I wouldn't think they are sabotage. sabotage. They are criminals. Smuggling is a crime in, in our soul. Anybody who, in, who engages in smuggling is a criminal. These are criminals who are clandestinely sucking the very blood that runs through the base of Ghana right. Right. and bleeding us to death. God, government is struggling so hard to keep this. I mean, we, we are all in this country, and we know that government after government has struggled with financing our economy. So if the, the, the president says that this must be a project, this must be a program to help all Ghanaians, and we have individuals who just don't care how other Ghanaians are suffering, right. and they are able to do this, then we call them criminals, and for me, they, they, they must be dealt with. As I speak with you, in this region, we have some fertilizer from going to some district. Boko is one. Uh, Pusuga is one. Garu is one. Timpani is one. We don't allow fertilizers to go to these districts in larger quantities. And all because of the RECSEC uh, intelligence that we wow. gathered. Because they go there, then they smuggle them out. They smuggle them out, right. Uh, Madame Paulina Baega, we're grateful for your time. Thank you extremely. So you heard the Upper East Regional Minister uh, Paulina uh, Abayege, uh, she was formerly the uh, Ghanaian ambassador to Italy and now the Upper East Regional Minister. So news just coming in, you just heard that a truck, uh, two trucks loaded with 1,000, over 1,050 kg bags of uh, fertilizer meant for the planting for food and jobs program uh, was caught attempting to smuggle uh, these fertilizers across the border to Burkina Faso. At the time of the arrest, uh, we're hearing that uh, the Bureau of National Investigations tipped off the police uh, service which uh, impounded these trucks uh, at the time of the arrest uh, 350 bags of these uh, fertilizers were already on the Burkina Bay registered truck on its way to Burkina Faso. We'll be keeping an eye on this development and bringing you updates when we have that. And this is News at 10 live from the News Hub at Adesawe. You can also hear us, uh, you can follow our live stream on uh, Facebook and on 3news.com. We have more news for you coming up shortly. Welcome back. Now, an across circuit court has granted the chief executive officer of Men's Gold and Apia Mensa uh, bail to the tune of one billion Ghana cities with five sureties. The court presided over by Jane Harriet Aquilique ordered that three of these sureties uh, be justified. Now, Apia Mensa, popularly known as Namwan, is also required to report to the police every Wednesday. Here's a report by Salom Amenya. Prosecutors have charged Namwan, his wife and sister, with his two companies, Men's Gold and Brew Marketing Consult, with 13 counts of abetment to defraud by false pretense, 
defrauding by false pretense, engaging in money deposit business without license, dealing in gold without license, and money laundering. In court on Thursday, before the case could begin, hundreds of customers of men's gold and sympathizers had besieged the court premises before Nam One was brought in. They want a payment plan on retrieving their blocked up funds. For God be so good to us, now he has been granted bill. The next action is that you should come out with payment plan and pay us. It is very clear. There are stories. There are things that are going on. So we want government to just understand that this must be handled by the judiciary alone. So that issues of data bank, blah, blah, and all those things, we don't, we don't want them to interfere in this. Men's gold customers, we are dying. Men's gold customers, and we are with them watch Kwadana, Bebri Awu, a man for any stroke, or be a wage at the papa, and then a mammy ho. Say, 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 yeah, they are messy. See a money bill, and it's a friend who are quemo, not your customers, and come on, the air penny. The plea of Nana Piat Mensa number one was taken on all 13 counts preferred against him, to which he pleaded not guilty. Namwan was granted bail after his lawyer, Kwame Kufu, moved an application for bail. He told the court Namwan did not abscond or jump bail as being speculated, but left the country to Dubai to retrieve some $39 million in investment with a company in a gold deal gone bad. Kwame Kufu further argued that the men's gold CEO's return was on his own terms and could not be considered a flight risk, adding he would always avail himself to stand trial. He also prayed the court to take into consideration when granting bail that his client has already surrendered his passport to the state and several of his assets and properties, including 70 vehicles, have already been seized by the state. Therefore, the court should grant him bail in favorable terms. The prosecutor, assistant superintendent of police, ASP Sylvester Sari, read the brief fact indicating investigations into the matter are still ongoing and did not oppose or support the bail. The judge granted the bail in the sum of 1 billion cities. The case has been adjourned to August 12. Meanwhile, Nana Pia Mensa was at the CID headquarters moments after the court's decision to initiate the paperwork on the bail conditions. After about two hours, uh, he, along with police CID officers, stormed out of the premises to go and evaluate some of his assets for his bail bond. The beleaguered men's gold CEO got to the CID headquarters a few minutes after 10 a.m. He stayed within the offices of the CID for about two hours, concluding the paperwork regarding his bail bond. To meet the one billion CD bill with five sureties, three of which must be justified, Namwan, as he is popularly known, came out of the offices accompanied by some officers to go assess his properties being used for his bail conditions. At the premises of the CID were some of his supporters covered in white powder to justify victory. They want the state to allow him to complete the process and pay off customers whose investments have been locked up. He was whisked away in a white-tinted SUV in the company of some police officers with the hope of concluding the asset valuation before close of day. And economists at Data Bank Courage uh, Mate wants government to push for tax compliances uh, to raking more revenue and bring on board those left out of the tax net. He stressed the need for the state to uh, tame excessive spending to reflect the benefits of borrowing and uh, donor support. He was speaking ahead of the mid-year budget review expected to be presented in Parliament on Monday, July 29 by the Finance Minister. Mid-year budget review, which will be delivered by the finance minister, Ken Oforiata, will, among other things, focus on augmenting government revenue to fund outstanding social and economic policies. It will also afford government the opportunity to take a second look at revenue availability to execute the remaining programs, especially infrastructural development. Revenue mobilization, which was highlighted in the 2019 budget, will remain a key feature in the mid-year review. 
Concerns over the years are whether existing measures by government to mobilize revenue are really yielding any result. Government has, however, commenced efforts to cut some avoidable expenses. Key among them is the ongoing work on cutting out capacity charges for power that was not consumed. Economists at Data Bank Courage Marte caution government to cut the human face in task collection and prioritize automation in its process to show up revenue. Increasing taxes or roping in a lot more people into the tax nets, then as politicians you expect them to be mindful of the outcome or the implication for, for, for their political fortunes. What we expect is for efficiency measures to be strictly pushed to ensure that existing taxes raise sufficient revenue to aid the implementation of expenditure um, plans for the year. He expects the finance minister to brief Ghanaians on the outcome of the port reforms, whether the gains are to weigh the losses. One drive that needs to be taken up seriously is the deployment of fiscal electronic device. This has been on the table for a while and we haven't seen that coming through. I think we need to accelerate the processes to implement and operationalize the deployment of fiscal electronic device because this is going to further deepen the VAT penetration rate because it's supposed to monitor the sales of VAT registered businesses in real time. On the luxury vehicle levy, he believes it has come to stay and expects government to redefine the levy to give clearer meaning to the taxpayer. He encouraged government to do the needful by enforcing compliance on tax collection and avoid Avoid options of adding more taxes. National Disaster Management Organization NADMO is to demolish a 60 year old kindergarten structure uh, in Kusi in the Denchebo district or the eastern region. The building, uh, which was ripped off during a rainstorm, has been declared a death trap. Built in 1960, the Methodist Primary School housed in this structure has seen no major refurbishment. Ripped off roofs, gaping cracks, the building has been declared uninhabitable. A severe rainstorm in 2018 ripped off the building that housed about 70 kindergarten pupils. In a desperate attempt to get help, the school mounted pressure on the municipal assembly and the education office for assistance. The school on its own has purchased roofing sheets to roof part of the ripped off roof. The rainstorm ripped it off and you've been able to put some few cylinders on it again. It still doesn't make it safe. It's safe some, somehow. It's safe somehow. When you say it's safe somehow, how do you mean? Because for the, for the uh, walls, they are strong. The walls, they are strong, just that the roofing caused the problem. The assembly says compromising the safety of the pupils is not an option to be explored. Some of the pupils have been moved into a new structure put up by the assembly, but many still sit in the disaster-prone classroom. In the last three months, the municipal chief executive, Seth Biri Kurang Ofosu says he has been forced to use assemblies internally generated funds to construct a three-unit classroom with an office block for the pupils. We hurriedly put this one in place. So now that this one is in place and the kids are moving, we will come and pull it down. Uh, we have, I think they are using only one classroom for KG. But I've spoken with the church and the church is putting up a place for them. Immediately they finish, we move the case out and pull it down. Whilst the school recognizes the intervention by the assembly, there remains an urgent need of decks yet to be supplied. We will review our budget very soon and we will include furniture in it. So hopefully by the end of the year, the assembly will also provide some of the, the furniture to some of the schools. We cannot do all at the same time, but uh, gradually we know we will get there. And that's our wrap-up board news at 10. Thank you very much for staying with us on behalf of the crew. Good night. There's more news at 3news.com and you have a lovely weekend.